Ooh, hey everyone, this is Dara from Daily Crypto Trade Signals coming to you live from Bangkok, guys. It's a great time to be live. We've got lots to talk about. We're going to talk about Dogecoin. Looks like a Dogecoin developer and Mark Cuban are fighting it out, guys. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum. Don't forget, we've got the merge coming up uh, next week as well. We've got CPI data coming up as well. So we've got a lot of huge catalysts that are going to be coming out for the crypto market and the cryptocurrency out there. So that is pretty huge, guys and gals. We're also going to be talking about Luna Classic. What is going on with that? What is what has caused a collapse? Will, will we recover from here? Or are we just going to be going Going down, de -de 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 down, down. So we got lots to talk about. Also, we're going to be talking about Binance and uh, you know the whole uh, the burn out there because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what the burn is, and a lot of people who are newbies in the, in the space are really a misunderstanding of what the burn is because a lot of you out there are believe that the burn is going to be on every single transaction. Yes, that is true if the transactions um, happen on chain. So if these have if the transactions are not happening on chain. Uh, there's no, not going to be any burn. So, for example, you have to understand that you know most centralized exchanges, what they do is they have a hot and cold wallet, and most uh, buys and sells are done on their internal order book. So, any buys and sells on an internal order book are not going to be not going to be done on chain. Therefore, therefore, and I air quoted, therefore, there's not going to be any burn tax on those uh, on those trades. Keep in mind that the majority of the uh, trades that are done right now are done on Binance. And remember, most of those trades are done via the internal Binance order book and they're not on chain, it, which is very different. If you, if you connect a software, a hardware wallet to a, a decentralized exchange out there and, and you do transactions on chain, then definitely there will be a 1.2% burn. But if you're doing it on a centralized exchange, it's not gonna happen, guys. It's absolutely not gonna happen on every single transaction. So guys, you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep that in mind that technically speaking, a lot of you do believe that every single, every single uh, buy and sell is gonna have a 1.2% uh, burn uh, tax. That's not gonna happen if these, uh, uh, if these buys and sells are happening on an order book on a centralized exchange. It's not gonna happen. On chain, yes. On chain, 100%, yes. That's what's gonna happen. So guys and girls, that's what it is. So I just wanna clarify that because a lot of people have been beating me up. Uh, because, you know, yesterday I had, uh, you know, the thumbnail, Binance says no. Yeah, Binance said yes to, to any on-chain transactions uh, and, and charging the burn. So that means any, any, of the, any of the transactions that are coming into the Binance platform or leaving the Binance platform via an on-chain, via basically the uh, Luna C blockchain, Yes, there will be a tax, but any internal tra any t internal sells and buys via the order book on the centralized exchange, there ain't going to be a tax, guys. So that ain't fun. That is a fact. So you know, uh, you know what the Luna Foundation, what the not the Luna Foundation, but you know the Luna Classic uh, community wants is they want uh, Binance and centralized exchanges to impose a 1.2 percent tax on every transaction, either on chain or off chain. Uh, for example. They want a Binance to basically charge the users 1.2% uh, anytime there's a transaction on their order book, guys. So that's what they want, and Binance has said no to that. And uh, most of the most of the centralized exchanges are saying no to that. So you guys just need to, you know, get everything correct out there and understand that the 1.2% burn tax is only via on chain, guys. It's not uh, it's not on order book. So that that is what that is all about. I just want to clarify that. Because a lot of people beat me up. Oh, yeah, OG spreading foot. OG spreading foot out there because uh, he said that uh, Binance said no to the burn tax. But Binance did not say no to the burn tax. Binance said no to all transactions via the order book being charging their customers 1.2%. Okay? So that is what that's all about. So don't beat me up in the comments. I don't like it. And a lot of you out there, when you uh, watch the videos, you only just uh, see the, the thumbnails and you comment. That's not fair. If you're going to comment, at least watch the video to the end, then then comment. But if you just read the thumbnail and uh, then comment, shame on you. Shame on you, I'm calling you out on that one, guys. So yeah, I'm ranting. So remember, everything you see here is not financial advice. It's just an OG in-house expressing my opinion. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Go back and watch all the other videos. I would appreciate it. And uh, guys, do become a member. Uh, and you know, if you become a member, we have a private WhatsApp. Uh, we have a private WhatsApp a group and you know we get hundreds and hundreds of messages go there and click that right there and you become a member guys so let's dive into it let's dive into it let's go down the crypto rabbit hole together let's do it so what's happening right now we did see that the u.s markets were did pretty good yesterday pretty favorable so that is pretty good uh, the fed is also talking about uh you know there's going to be significant rate hikes to keep uh, uh inflation under control 
So even though that this, uh, this story came out, it didn't affect the markets. We're seeing that you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, did go up. We're going to be jumping into that. So it looks like Fed Governor Christopher Weller on Friday made comments indicating that uh, it could back another 70, 0 0.075 uh, basis points interest rate hike. So that is kind of interesting, and the, the markets didn't uh, respond too negatively out there. So that is pretty, that is pretty cool beans. So I was expecting, you know, more negativity out there, more Debbie Downers. But in fact, the markets kind of ignore the Fed. I think the, uh, the markets are getting tired of the Fed, Fed, Fed out there. Also, don't forget we got the CPI data coming out on Tuesday, guys. So buckle up for that. I'm pretty sure that is going to be, uh, from my perspective, I'm pretty sure that the current administration, uh, just before they're on their way out of there. Uh, they're they're going to try to, uh, I don't want to say they're going to manipulate, but I don't think that the numbers are going to be negative. I think the numbers are pretty much going to be positive. And the reason I say that is because they're going to make sure it's positive. All right. So uh, I think that's what's going to be happening out there. So get ready uh, for that. I don't think it's going to be, I think there's going to be good numbers coming in. Uh, also too, the fear and greed index yesterday, the fear and greed has gone up a lot yes, from yesterday. We're at 22 to 28. So that's not too bad, guys and gals out there. Uh, you know, this is still, I believe there's still a good uh, buying opportunity and, uh, you know, like I tell everybody in my, in my chat out there that, you know, the best time to uh, become millionaires is now. Uh, I mean, a lot of uh, newbies, what they do is they ignore the uh, bear cycle and what they do is they only buy during the bull run. Uh, but this is when you can get the greatest and deepest discounts. So this is a good buying opportunity. Remember, don't don't put all your dry powder in at once, guys and gals. Uh, you know, definitely want to ladder stuff in and uh, you know buy on the way down. And also, it's very important too that you definitely do out there. You put some uh, you know limit orders. Uh, you know, 10, 10 or fifteen to twenty percent lower than the actual price now, in case you get some hunter wicks happening. Because we did see yesterday that we had a big big uh, spike down for Luna uh, and that was two parts one it was a, a big whale dumped uh, a whole bunch of uh, Luna classic out there and also we saw the market makers were uh, trying to liquidate as many longs to take as much liquidity out there so that was what was going on with that and that is what is going to be causing spikes so we're going to be talking about Luna classic in a minute if you take a look at what's going on in terms of the crypto bubbles right now we see that uh, the biggest winner right now out there is a uh, Luna out there with 168 uh, percent up that's Luna that's not Luna classic that's the that's a Luna 2.0, I guess we'd call it. We're also seeing that Luna, Luna Classic is down about 19%. So hopefully, hopefully out there we'll see a little bit of recovery out there. And uh, things are going to be going up, up, up. So I'm hoping it's going to be going up and uh, things will be going uh, things will be going north for Luna. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about social sentiment of Luna. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. And we've got some Dogecoin news as well. We're seeing, if you take a look at the heat, heat map, everything's looking pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin is at 21,314. Uh, Ethereum is up. So everything's looking good. And don't forget, we got the merge. Uh, that's going to be happening around about September 15th. So hopefully that will be uh, not a situation of uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. And maybe we can get, uh, maybe maybe for Ethereum, we can get uh, buy, buy the rumor and buy the news. That would be, that would be fantastic. That would be uh, amazing if we could see that happening. So I'm hoping it's going to happen. You're hoping it's going to happen. Uh, what's going on right now for the DXY out there? We're seeing that the DXY right now is coming down significantly. So that is also one of the reasons that is helping Bitcoin go up, guys. So that is pretty good. And we're seeing the DXY is coming down. So that is exactly what we need to see happening out there. Uh, if we take a look at the top 10 mentioned coins on uh, Twitter right now, we're seeing Ethereum, Bitcoin, XRP, Terra, Luna Classic is still getting a lot of mentions, still getting that social engagement. And that is one of the reasons that uh, we're seeing that um, you know Terra Luna Classic is uh, going up, guys. I mean, right now it's not going up. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing a little bit of consolidation. We're going to be jumping into the chart, so keep on watching, and we're going to do a technical deep dive on what's going on with Luna Classic, what we can expect in terms of price action in the next week. We're seeing the Shiba Inu. Uh, people talk about that, and we're also seeing that Cardano and uh, Terra 2.0. But you guys can see once again, Doge community, uh, Doge community. I'm calling you out. I'm calling you all out. You know, I'm looking, I'm seeing the sheep, I'm seeing the Cla uh, uh, Terra Luna Classic, but I ain't seen the Doge, guys. So once again, this is the uh, 10, mentioned, uh, 10 mentions, uh, top 10 mentions on Twitter in the last hour. I don't see no Doge out there. And you know, you guys, uh, you have nothing to do but blame yourselves out there. I'm trying to do my part, guys. I'm trying to do my part. I try to at least uh, create at least uh, three to four tweets about Doge every day. Go to my Twitter, check that out. 
Uh, I'm not making up stories. So you guys need to get out there and do it. You're just, you're just not doing it. So that's all there is to it. Hey, some good news. It looks like the U.S. Treasury Department will advise the federal government to press for on uh, work to issue a digital dollar. So we could be getting a digital dollar soon, guys. So that would be pretty good. Uh, hopefully we can get that sooner uh, than later because you know that China has a digital one out there. And, uh, you know, if we want to stay competitive, we're also seeing a lot of countries, we're seeing, also seeing a lot of countries in developing nations like in Africa. They are, you know, if not rolled out, definitely do have a clear uh, definitive plan out there on how they're going to roll out the digital currency. So that is going to be important for uh, the U United States of America out there. So let's get it, guys. Let's take a, let's take a look at the uh, Bitcoin uh, chart right now and see what's going on with the idiot bitty baby. So Bitcoin is looking pretty handsome, pretty pretty fantastic out there. It's at 21,309. Now we can see that right now Bitcoin is just 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 at our, I mean, this was resistance before. I've turned this white because it's not, it's not support and it's not resistance. We're just about to break, break, break free. Uh, and get ourselves above this line here. So this line is about, um, we're just slightly above it right now, but I'm still not convinced that we are 100% out of the woods yet. We definitely need to get ourselves uh, definitely looking at uh, $22,000. If we can see Biddy going to $22,000, that's going to be insane in the membrane, guys. So you're going to love it. I love it. Let's still take a look at the Biddy on the weekly right now. So the weekly is looking pretty good. Let me clean up this chart. I swear my charts are possessed, guys. My charts are absolutely possessed because I see other people just like, like, like zing, zing, zing. And my charts just always like, that. People just poop -poo out there. So you can see we have this double bottom still in play. Uh, we still have the, the blue zone here, and I'm still believing that, you know, with this double bottom, who doesn't like double bottoms, right? You know what I mean? And uh, we're seeing that uh, we're looking pretty good uh, for the weekly. We got one day, 21 hours left on this weekly candle, guys. Motorbike, what can you do? And uh, it's looking pretty good overall, so let's get it, get it, get it. Let's take a look at what's going on with, the, with Doge right now. So Doge right now, time of recording, Doge is not too shabby, not too shabby, woof, woof. We're seeing that Doge is up 3.76%, so not too bad. We're seeing that the volumes have gone up about 74% in the last 24 hours. So that is cool beans for the Doge, guys. So let's get the Doge. You want the Doge. I want the Doge. I'm just going to adjust my camera out there. I'm too bright. I'm too bright. I'm probably burning your eyeballs out there on YouTube land. And we're seeing that the market cap is also uppity up, up. And, you know, if we take a look at the chart in the last one day, uh, we're not doing too bad. We're things still moving up to the upside. We started at a low of about 6061. And... Uh, we did, we, did, we did top out for Doja at 0648, and now we're around about uh, 0, 0, 6, 4. So not too shabby, not too shabby. On the seven day, we're seeing that uh, Doja uh, did have a substantial dippity whip whip, but we recovered fast, fast from that. So that is cool, guys. Absolute cool beans in the house, guys. So it looks like Mark Cuban responds to Dogecoin founders. So it looks like right now we're seeing that the Dogecoin founder you know, our salty dog, our salty dog, Jackson Palmer, the guy that we all love to hate uh, because he's just a salty dog because basically he sold all of his Dogecoin to buy uh, Toyota and he left town and now he's working for Adobe and he's just basically, he's just saying that, uh, you know, Mark Cuban's been brainwashed, Mark, Mark Cuban, uh, you know, has been indoctrinated into crypto and doesn't know nothing and he's just a, he's just a fudster and, a, and shilling and this and that. So Mark Cuban fires back. And basically says that uh, J Jackson Palmer, get a life, grow up, grow up here. And uh, basically, uh, Mark Cuban kicked him in the nuts. Kicked him in the nuts. So that's what that's going on. So guys, you know, I, I think that Jackson Palmer, he just needs to like, just like, shut up already. Because nobody cares about Jackson Palmer. He's a definitely a non dandy So Jackson Palmer, if you're watching this video, I got one thing to say to you. Can you shut the beep up? We don't care about you. You don't care about, we don't care. Nobody cares about you. Look. You sold your doge. You could have been a gazillionaire living the Lambo life, uh, you know, having, you know, models and whatever you want, living, you know, uh, eating caviar 24-7 and uh, having a great time. But what, what did you do out there? You sold your doge. You didn't believe in the project. And now that you're all salty and you're all pissed off, can I say that? I said it. Uh, you just love to attack everybody that's, uh, that's, that's better than you. So you're a loser. Get out of town. I'm not, I have no respect for you. So. It is what it is, guys and gals. So get out of there already. So this is kind of interesting fun fact. How long does it take to buy one Dogecoin? You guys want to know? I'll tell you. So we got to get the bottom of this article. Basically, it takes 9.6 hours to mine one Dogecoin. So, and uh, you know, if we're using a, a NVIDIA uh, a GPU or something out there, it takes about 
uh, 9.6 hours to mine one uh, Dogecoin. So it's a fun fact. It's an uh, absolute fun fact. Let's take a look at the social sentiment, what's going on with Terra Luna Classic right now. So engagements are about up about 88%, but this is not good, guys, because you know we were in 130, 140 level. It's down, down, down. Take a look at the social sentiment for Doge, guys. Not looking good. You guys need to do your part. Sure, I'm trying to, you guys are going to be blaming me for being run today. But guys, I definitely do watch social sentiment. And I'm, I'm telling you out there, you know, you know, there's, you know, what's going to, what is going to drive any crypto token? It's a, a number of things. One is the tokenomics, okay? Uh, it's the apps and the apps that are built on top of it. Remember, Dogecoin uh, has nothing built on top of it. Uh, and it's also going to be social sentiment, guys. Social sentiment is going to be a big, big driving force. Uh, for for any cryptocurrency and we're seeing that the Terra Luna Classic as I showed you is still you know in the top 10 mentions uh, for uh, cryptocurrencies on Twitter but when it comes to Doge nobody's doing anything about it so that is poop push matter we're seeing right now that Terra Luna Classic is down 18.13 percent we are seeing that the uh, total uh, volume that's being traded is light right now we're still seeing it's down about 23.96 percent in terms of traded volume we're seeing that the total market cap cap excuse me is down 18 percent but we are still seeing that the total market cap is being traded in a single 24-hour period. So that is not too shabby out there. So it is what it is, guys. What else? Let's, take, let's, let's do a deep dive technically what's going on right now. So we are seeing right now that, uh, that uh, the Terra Luna... Motorbike! Motorbike! I gotta love the motorbike! We're seeing the Terra Luna Classic out there. It is, it is being supported at the 4.2 level. We have broken down from the uh, 4.5 level, so I, I need to change that. Let me get it out of there. See, my, my, my charts are possessed, guys. Or I've got fat fingers, something like that. So the, the, uh, the, uh, zero, four, the zero 042 level is acting support. We're seeing here that the uh, zero 045 level is now acting as resistance, so that is not good. These are all some key resistance levels that we need to get above uh, for Terra Luna to, to continue its journey upwards and upwards and upwards and beyond. So we are seeing that typically you will see that the Terra Luna collapse, it will make an all time high, then it will normally retrace guys. And that is what we're seeing right now. We're seeing that, you know, from here to here, we did see around about a, a 27, 26% retracement. And we are seeing something very similar now. So you're seeing from the top here. And remember at the 06 level, that was a huge psychological level for uh, Luna Classic. We couldn't get past that. We have, we've had a big downside rejection. And right now we're seeing a pretty much similar kind of a similar kind of action, about 27% downward. So this is kind of what we're seeing, a bit of consolidation. Uh, we're seeing a correction, then we're going to have a consolidation. You can see that here we had a consolidation after we had the downward uh, spike. So from here, if you, if you take a look at this uh, bottom here to where we are, we kind of came down after the downside. We did see around about a 70% pump to the upside. So what I'm saying is if history repeats itself, I mean, I'm not saying that history is going to repeat itself, we could definitely be seeing a 70, we could be seeing a 70, 70% break to the upside. Now we can see that the, we have fallen below the 20 day EMA. We are still uh, being uh, still above the 50 day EMA. So that is pretty positive. So if we go from here and we add about 70% out there, we could be seeing that we could, our next target uh, could be around about 0.73. So based on the history of, you know, we have all time highs and we have a consolidation, another all time high, then a consolidation. Uh, and after we have this consolidation, we often see a nice pump uh, about about 70%. So if this happens, then we could be seeing uh, around about uh, seven, 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 three, seven in the house. So that is our next target, guys. So our next target is going to be around about there. Let me just paint that in. That is our next target zone for Luna Classic, guys. So tell me what you think. Smash the likes and comment. I'm going to put that as a purple purple line. So guys, do you think that we're going to have a uh, you know continued uh, after this consolidation, do you think that we're going to have a nice pump to the upside following the same uh, historical patterns that we've seen uh, recently for uh, Luna Classic? Or are we just going to be going down and we're going to be dump skiing down to this level? Guys, I'd love to hear what you guys say. Comment up a storm. Let's get it, guys. Also, looks like, uh, you know, uh, is crypto people are quick to judge projects. Now, I just wanted, I thought this, I thought this was kind of interesting. This, someone said Dokkan must be arrested for tax evasion stock uh, market manipulation, harming thousands of people. Luna 2. Point zero is another trick that manipulates and destroys people. So a lot of people are calling out Doquan and saying, look, that uh, you know Luna Luna 2.0 is just another manipulation by Doquan. Guys, what do you think about that? Is that true or is this just somebody making up a uh, nefarious tweet out there? So I'd love to hear what you got to say about that. What else is coming in right now? Uh, looks like uh, Justin, US 
get out of that U.S. household wealth fell by a record 6.1 trillion in Q2 2022. Wow, that is not good. What else is also coming in? We're seeing that uh, track the Ethereum merge in real time. It looks like we we are on track to hit the merge. Uh, the Ethereum merge 2.0 should be happening very soon. I think 15th or 16th of uh, September. That should be happening depending on when the block is hit, guys. So that is cool. That is absolutely cool. Breaking MicroStrategy is raising up another 500 million to buy more Bitcoin. So it looks like MicroStrategy is going to be blazing into more Bitcoin. So that is pretty bullish overall for all of the market. Let's take a look at what's going on with Shibi Weeby right now. So Shibi Weeby yesterday did uh, had an explosive move to uh, almost 14. It got rejected around 50% of this candle, and right now we're trading at 12.9394. So I think we should get it. We're seeing a little bit. We're seeing a little bit of a resistance around about this level we're seeing around about the 13 the 13 level is a little bit of resistance right now for shibi weeby so hopefully we can get ourselves above that i'm hoping we can get ourselves above that uh, but overall things are still looking pretty good so let me just paint that resistance in right there so we have some resistance around about this level around about 13 is some resistance level let me just uh, put that in this purple so Hopefully, she believe we can get above the purple uh, rain line. Let's take a look at Ethereum and let you get out of here. So right now, we're seeing Ethereum is looking pretty good, and it is confirmed. This whole area has been confirmed as a support level out there. So let me just paint that in there right now. So that's looking pretty good. And uh, just, just be careful that we don't see a little bit of a dump ski uh, after the merge, guys. Hopefully, it's by the rumors and by the news and not by the rumors and sell the news out there. So that is pretty good news out there. So let's take a look at total market cap, 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 cap. We're seeing right now the total market cap is up. It's up 1.07 trillion, and the volumes have been going insane in the membrane, and 71.10 billion. And the Bitcoin dollars has been going up, pretty up, up. So overall, we're seeing a lot of green, a lot of greeny weeny everywhere. Everything's looking pretty good. You guys should be excited. We're seeing that uh, also another interesting fact is that DOT has just uh, passed Doji Woja right now. So DOT market cap is at 8, 8, uh, 8.8 billion. And the Doge uh, market cap is 8.4. So we just got flipped off by the dot, guys. So that we're not going to accept that. Let's get going, guys. It's up to you, the community, to get that happening. And we're seeing that Luna Classic has uh, fallen from 24 to the 28th spot. And their total market cap uh, right now for Luna Classic is about 2.8 billion, uh, guys and gals. So let's keep on keeping on. Uh, let's hopefully Luna Classic can recover and uh, well, things will go up. Remember, now this is financial advice. If you are deciding to uh, invest in Luna Classic, do your own research. And remember, never invest more than you're willing to lose out there. It's still a little bit of a lottery ticket out there, guys and gals. So, guys, do go follow me on my Twitter out there. I would appreciate it. I would absolutely appreciate it. And follow, follow, follow. We've got about uh, 4,696 followers out there. And... Uh, also, one of my members out there had his pet recently die out there. So he asked me if I'd give a big shout out to his pet. So it looks like he had uh, had his pet out there. Uh, what was his name of the pet? Hi, OG is Nick on Twitter. Uh, I wonder if you could do better. Uh, Tyrone. So it looks like Tyrone passed away uh, and his little buddy after five years, guys. So God bless and uh, rest in peace, Tyrone. I uh, appreciate it. And much love out there to the community. Guys, don't forget to go follow me on Twitter, guys. Follow, follow, follow. Let's get this up to 5,000 followers. What are you waiting for? Uh, guys and gals, don't forget to go down there. Check out all my links. Now, become a Patreon member. Buy the channel of coffee. And check out my affiliate link, guys. Buy an Anna Ledger. Secure a crypto. I appreciate it. And send us some Dogecoin dust. And guys, don't forget to get the merch, guys. Get the merch. I would appreciate it. So that's going to bring this video to a close, guys. So take care. God bless. I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Next one should be out around about 7.30, 8 p.m. Back up time tonight. So hopefully nothing crazy happens. But it uh, looks, like looks like overall crypto pretty good. Bitcoin is up. Dogecoin is up. Everything is, looks like we're heading uh, up, 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 guys. So be cautious. Don't, uh, don't ape into everything like crazy, guys. Remember, crypto is a jungle out there. And to all the lunatics out there, I love you. God bless. Let's hopefully tomorrow is a better day for all the lunatics out there. Peace out.